Hello, hello, and welcome to Art Snack. That's the time of day when we take a really short break from our hectic schedules to talk about art. My name is Jenny Lynn James, and I'm an artist based in Toronto, Canada. And with me today is Tessa Alexander Sloan, all the way from Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you so much for joining us, Tessa. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yes, yeah, so Tessa, please tell us about your art journey. I know we spoke before and it's very, very interesting. So please tell the viewers about your whole journey as an artist. Um, sure, my journey as an artist started from since I was a child. I've always enjoyed making art, doing any kind of creative endeavor, you know, um, that was just my thing. Uh, I did art in high school and then coming out of high school, um, I actually studied fashion design because it was a more um, practical career choice. Yes. And I worked in, in the field of design for over 10 years, okay. um, but I never stopped making art in, in terms of fine art, I was drawing, or was doing all those types of things. Um, I... Uh, and with the birth of my first child, um, I actually was really drawn to creating a series that um, kind of highlighted that whole experience. Because, of course, it was a very, you know, unique experience having a child. Yes. And I did a, a series of drawing mixed media pieces called um, The Changing Body. Mm -hmm. And I was encouraged, actually, to show the work. Because even though I had been creating and making work I'd never formally shown it oh. um, in, in terms of an exhibition. Yes. Um, and so that was my first, you know, entry into the world of exhibiting, um, doing that, that series called The Changing Body. And I got a really good response to the work. Um, and so a series of, of, of events happened that kind of, you know, becoming a mother, not really wanting to be um, an absentee mother, you know, so spending more time with my child as opposed to traveling, you know, um, making work, all that sort of thing, just kind of led me eventually to want to do more um, work um, from home. So therefore more paintings and drawings yes. and so on. And, and eventually phase out the fashion okay. and the costuming um, aspect of my creative process. Okay, right, right, right. That is an amazing story and I'm um, so happy that you were able to, to channel your energy in um, your creative energy in, in a, a slightly different direction. But um, you've done so much great work over the years. I've been hearing out many you. fabulous <laughs> stories about you. So do you have some pieces you can show us today? Sure. Um, I want to show you first, um, I'm going to share my screen. Yes. Um, I, I first want to show you a piece that I did for, um, are you seeing it? It's coming. Okay, yes, here we are. Right. So this piece was done, um, I was invited uh, an exhibition that was supposed to commemorate 75, 75 years of the UN. Okay. And they asked one artist from every country in the world that the UN is, um, that is part of the UN, to yes. make a piece um, very size specific, um, okay. commemorating the 75 years of the UN. Right. Um, unfortunately, because of coronavirus, the exhibition was not mounted physically in New York and the United Nations as it was supposed to. Um, right. It was done virtually, okay. um, but they're hoping that later this year that they'll be able to to have it, um, the actual physical exhibition. But I'll just tell you a little bit about this piece. It's called yes. Convergence. And it, it speaks a little bit of how my work has been, um, because you know, your work evolves all the time. You oh, know? Yes. So from the, from the moment that I did that first exhibition, you know, and just, you know, different experiences. Um, I've done a couple artist residencies, um, you know, and just as you grow as an artist, as you're chain, you know, you change your interests, these different kinds of things. So I just want to show you a little bit of what my current, mm -hmm. um, I guess. And so this was, um, what is, is the medium here? 
Right, so mainly I work in watercolor and if we have time, I'll tell you why. Um, but I'll tell you about the piece and then you'll, you know, um, the piece is called Convergence. And what the piece is, is representative of myself as a mixed race person. Yeah. Um, so it is a profile of myself. Oh. But I've painted it to look like the earth. Okay. Um, right. And but what I have done here, as I, I have the lotus flower in, in my hair, um, the lotus flower is symbolic of the Indian heritage mm -hmm. and the symbolism associated with the lotus. And then here I have the um, kola nut um, in the Adinki, Indic, Adinkra, sorry, language, kola nut symbolizing, um, you know, uh, prosperity uh, and that sort of good fortune and so on. Oh. Um, so I've drawn that in. So this is a West African language. Okay. Yeah. Um, visual language of the kola nuts. Uh, so that's the background, forms the background. And then, of course, Trinidad being the land of the hummingbird, the original name for Trinidad was Kairi. Yeah. And so the hummingbird um, becomes the sim symbolism of being from Trinidad. Right. Uh, and then, of course, the, the halo around the head also represents the moon, which is a feminine essence. Oh. So that's why this piece is called Convergence. It's, symbol, it's symbolic of the converging of these different um, ethnicities um, because, of course, the UN wanting to celebrate 75 years of UN is about, you know, us all recognizing and working together the differences, respecting differences and, and so on. So yes, that's yeah. that piece that I did for that exhibition. Brilliant. So Brilliant. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for that. Um, and uh, then I'm going to show you a couple of pieces. Have I stopped sharing my screen? Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, good. I'm going to show you a couple of pieces that I have here with me. So my medium is watercolor. Watercolor. Um, it's okay. not only watercolor, but um, I, I really enjoy the medium. I think it's probably, there are many reasons be, um, as I do more and more investigation into, into artwork and so on. Um, watercolor. In the beginning, I was drawn to it because it's suitable for the Caribbean. It, it dries quickly and there's all these vibrant, beautiful colors. I love the fluidity of watercolor. Yes. Um, I love allowing the medium to just kind of, you know, blend and flow and okay. that sort of thing, which is reminiscent to me also of fabric. Because, you know, oh, yes, yes. Just, so you have, you know, your background in fashion. Yes. Exactly, exactly. However, I uh, uh, also now know that watercolor was seen as a hobbyist medium. It was never given the kind of credit that um, oil was. And then of course, acrylic is, is, a, is a recent um, medium that's being used and it can be used in all different ways. Um, yes, yes. But I have, I have opted to stick with watercolor. Not that I don't work in oil or, or I hardly ever work, work with acrylic. Um, I feel like I use acrylic. <laughs> Yeah, but watercolor for me also represents, it was also the medium that was allowed, um, women were allowed to use it because it was seen as, this, you know, thing that they could do in the domestic sphere. Um, and so, okay. and then on top of that, um, watercolor or water media is very old. So you find that um, in a lot of um, societies, uh, in India and in, in Africa and so on, that they, the pigments that they mix, a lot of times it's blended to be sort of water-based. Oh, okay. Um, and so I am I am sort of channeling all of that in using watercolor. Right. And sort of um, pushing the medium to yes. be recognized as a, as a serious medium, also as a medium of historical and cultural significance. Right. Um, so another piece I'm going to show you here, and I'm only show I'm, I'm showing you based on what I showed you first, this, this is a series that I've done. It's called Desi. It's a mixed media piece. Um, it is roughly images of either based on loosely on my siblings or my nieces and so on. Okay. Um, and, and, but what it is, it's that it's recognition of East Indian heritage. What I've done is I've torn, um, not, not real indenture papers, but I've gotten indenture um, papers that have been scanned and photocopied and I've torn them to, to incorporate them into okay. the pieces, which yeah. I then um, have people that are not obviously Indian, yes. um, that they are diasporic because the, you know, they came as indentures and, um, and 
but then they made something of the land of, the, of which they came, um, not always by choice and not always wanting to see the period of indenture was not supposed to be something that was permanent. Right, um, right. But here they are, and here we are as survivors, as is coming from this situation and making something new from it. So I've incorporated into the, um, the collage and so on, patterns that are specific to Indian culture, such as the Paisley. The Paisley so yes. the Paisley comes from India. Yes. And like I said, I purposely did not want the face to look purely Indian because the reality is we've come, we've, we've converged, we've hybridized, we, we are now like Caribbean yes. people, but just paying homage to that. Oh, that's okay. one piece. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, this is another piece. So I, I'm, I'm very much inspired by my cultural things. Yes. Um, but culture also being not just the obvious culture, but also culture being everydayness of culture. So hence the reason why, like I said, these the women, um, yes. I almost always might in, will include people in my work, even if they're not the subject. So I'll show you a couple, but then I also have pieces like this. So this is oh. a, based on a Trinidad Blue Devil. Blue Devil, okay. Yeah. Um, and it's a more abstract sort of uh, manner of treatment of the work where the color is just loosely applied, the fun of the watercolor. Yes. Um, what I call, you know, having fun with my watercolor where I just okay. kind of <laughs> let it do what it wants to do on the page and then yes. I pull the image out from it. So this is Oh, it, so I see. Right, right. Yeah. So that's a blue devil. Um, so like I said, even if I'm doing something that's more... Uh, landscape -y, I still like to include figures. And this larger piece here is based on a place in Trinidad called Tururi. Um, and it is these uh, beautiful waterfall um, pools. But okay. what I wanted to, hear, to do here is keep the people as almost like invisible, but part of the landscape, Yes, but not not jumping out of the landscape. Oh, okay. Um, the right. idea being to show continuity of presence. So paying homage also because Tururi would have been um, somewhere that indigenous peoples would have settled. Oh, okay. And they would have had indigenous societies living there. Yes. Like the Nepoyo and so on. So I wanted to, you know, have that understanding that these are here we are now, but by making them also almost like invisible showing that, you know, this is a continuous process. Right, right. right? So this is, I know you can't really see the whole painting properly. I didn't think of it's that when I, So this when is I watercolor it. again? Yes, this is also watercolor. It's on board? It, no, it's on watercolor paper. But oh, I use um, okay. very, you know, thick watercolor Oh, okay, paper. right, right. And we have time um, for one more. Yeah, so the last piece I'm going to show you is going to yes. fill the whole screen. And uh, so here I wanted to show you, because then I want to show you all the different ways that I use the watercolor. See, yes, so yes. this is a, a much larger painting. It's um, it's just like a casual, yeah, yeah, at a pool Infinity side. Pool. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's, again, so what I was saying is that I would always have people in the piece even if they're either almost rendered invisible or if they are, this is a more traditional way of painting watercolor yes. where, you know, it's drawn first and then painted in and all that. But even as I do that, I am playing around with, with patterning and texture yes. within yes. the piece too and playing around with abstraction. Oh, you know, yeah. Then I, but then I, so I have, yes, yeah, so I have the idea of the abstraction, the design, but then I also then fine tune as well for the water. Yes. So yes, it's all these things that I'm playing right. around with. Right. In one piece. You can see the light on the water, the surface of yes. the water. Yeah. Well, thank <laughs> you so much. You can tell the viewers too a, a bit about some of the work that you do. Um, you're teaching art as well. Please tell us a little about that. Yeah, so I um, I have my own, so I, my studio is also set up. There's a space in my studio that's set up as a uh, as a I guess an art school for lack of a better word. Yes. Um, I do art classes with children. I actually have um, something called Kids Create Eight Six Eight, 
um, where younger children, um, I do projects with them that I create most of the time yes. um, that kind of not only are they art projects, but they're also projects that are specific to the, well, not always the Caribbean, but specific to time and place. So they would, even though it's an art project, they would do maybe something about, you know, leatherback to, to nesting or carnival arts or whatever, so that they are seeing the connection between art and and um, mm-hmm. culture, everyday life, yes. you know, or teaching them to look, you know, look and right. observe and appreciate things around them. Yes. And then I also give lessons to students all the way up from like, uh, all through high school up until pre-university where they come and they just, you know, learn technique. Um, I help them with portfolio development for exams as well as for um, university placement. And then I also am a part-time lecturer at UWE um, within fine art. So University of the West Indies. Okay. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yes. The University the viewers of the West wanted Indies. to get in touch with you. What is your, um, your website, your um, social media handle? Please tell us. Very easy. Everything is just Tessa Alexander Art. So it's T-E-S-S-A. A L E X A N D E R art yeah. at gmail.com. That's also the name of my website, Tessa Alexander, www. Um, yes. dot Tessa Alexander art dot com. Um, my Instagram page is the same. My, you know, so it's pretty okay. straightforward. So I will put it easy. here in yes. the uh, video so people can get in touch with you if they need more information about art classes. And uh, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us today on Art Snack. And um, thank you for having me. <laughs> yes, you're most welcome. Yes, and viewers, please tune in next time when we have another special guest. You can see my work too at uh, jennylynnjames.com backslash art. That's jennylynnjames.com backslash art and Facebook and Instagram at uh, art by Jenny Lynn James. Please remember to hit the subscribe button. So thanks again, Tessa. All the Thank best. Thank you. And same to you. <laughs>